Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing live on Monday the 14th of August. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 on the Twitter handle and I'm joined today by Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald. It's a bit cooler today, Aidan. I was melting in my car yesterday as you obviously saw. Uh, after the game, Celtic two wins out of two. Aberdeen won Celtic three. Goals from Leela Bada, Kyogo Furuhashi and Matt O'Reilly. Campaign off to a cracking start, Aidan. Lots of people still in dispute with the performance, but hey, each to their own. It's been a solid enough start, Aidan, in my opinion. Yet the manager knows there's room for improvement. He mentioned that himself yesterday. And uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, we spoke about the game yesterday. We went live after the game. But any more thoughts on it, having slept on it? Yeah, I watched a wee bit of it back, uh, Tony, last night, and I'm thinking that Matt O'Reilly did play really well. I know you also discussed that at the time. I was maybe a wee bit critical of some of his defensive work, but when I watched a good chunk of the game back last night, after we'd obviously finished the shift up, I realised that he was he put in a phenomenal performance. So I, I just wanted to touch on that, so no one was thinking that I was being overly critical of him. But uh, yeah, I thought Turnbull was good, and, and I actually thought even though... Hitati went off injured when he came on. That made a bit of a difference as well, even though it was only for a short spell before he went off for a knock. But overall, Tony, I think it was a really good result. But I, as you were touching on, the performance has still got a few levels to go up before we can say that Celtic are anywhere near their best. Now, one of the breaking news stories from the weekend was that Gustav Lagerbielka has addressed the, the possibility of signing for Celtic Brendan addressed it in his after-match presser when he was asked about Lager Bielka and he said, we're looking to obviously reinforce with Carol Starfield going, so hopefully we can do that in the coming days. So that's very positive. And uh, on on the transfer itself, Lager Bielka speaking to Swedish media was asked if it would be a step up and this is what he said. Very much. It's a fun challenge to come to a big club in Europe and play the Champions League and hopefully win titles. So that would be fun. It is a very b- big club with a good Swedish connection with Henrik Larsson, Karl Starfelt, Mikael Lustig and Johan Mjalby, among others. They play the Champions League every year and win titles. Then he was asked if it was his, would this possibly be his last game for Elfsburg. He says, maybe I don't want to say anything before something is signed, but it may well have been. I know that the clubs have been in negotiations. That's what I know. I have chosen to focus on my, this match. We'll have to deal with everything everything else now after the match. So that's looking pretty much like Gustav Lagerbielka is going to come in and sign Aiden. He didn't get didn't give too much away. Obviously, he had, a, he had one last match to go. I believe Elfsborg lost 1-0 yesterday. But uh, I think the managers reading between the lines pretty confident that they'll get that over the line and also Lagerbielka more or less alluding to the fact that, yeah, talking about Champions League football, fun challenge and all the Swedish contingent that have gone before him. So without it being a done deal as of yet, it just looks like he's going to come over, have his medical and looks like he'll sign Aiden. Yeah, it does, Tony. <laughs> it's one of those ones that he, he was trying to also be very safe when he was answering yeah. that question, as you would expect in case anything does happen. He's, he's not going to want to look daft, but I would say it's pretty much done. From what we understand, it is... Relevant near Brendan Rogers actually acknowledging it, even if it's in a roundabout way. The player touching on it, I'm sure he would have anticipated getting asked that question uh, when he was doing press at full time. Or if he was going to be doing press, sorry, and it was handled quite well. So, yeah, fingers crossed over the next couple of days, Tony, this one can be done and dusted because we've known about this for a while now. It's about a week or so, at least this sort of speculation has been floating about. So, if this can get confirmed, that's good. Then Celtic can move on to looking at other players because. I think there's still a bit of work to do between now and when the transfer window shuts. We spoke about a few things yesterday, but we also spoke about the fact that it felt like a big win yesterday and the manager was asked that question and he said, yeah, it was good to go there. And we also spoke about the fact that Aberdeen had a go at Celtic and Barry Robson alluded to the fact it was the best Aberdeen performance he's seen in recent memory. So Celtic withstood that and uh, played well. But a couple of injuries... uh, to star players, Cameron Carter Vickers felt his hamstring going tight and uh, Rio Tati with a calf injury. But 
a, one of the things to emerge from Cameron Carter Vickers' departure at half time was Stephen Welsh coming back in. And uh, he was mentioned that by Brendan Rogers and Callum McGregor, who both spoke about him because he came in and he deputised very well for uh, Cameron Carter Vickers. And this is what Brendan Rogers said about Stephen Welsh, who's slotting in at the back beside Mike Nabrowski. He said, I thought he was excellent when he came in. I liked Stephen. It t- I took him with me one pre-season as a young player because I really liked him, but for whatever reason, he maybe hasn't played the games. He's a Celtic boy. He wants to be at the club. I want him to be at the club. I said to him, I can't guarantee him how many games you're going to play. He may play 40 games in the season, but I know he's always ready. He trains really hard every day, and he came into the game and played with composure. He's aggressive, and Callum McGregor said this. I thought... He was outstanding when he came on. He really calmed the game. He saw the pictures, could see the passes, and that settled us and got us playing into a rhythm. I think Stephen has been outstanding, especially as an academy product. It's always difficult. You come in, you play well, you drop out the team, you come back, you drop out the team again. You have to be resilient, especially as an academy player. It is always easy for the club to go and buy players, and it is a real challenge for the homegrown ones. But Welsh's attitude has been outstanding and his quality is getting better. He has grown in stature and he's a player who can be really important for us as well. I think that speaks volumes for how he's viewed amongst his peers. Aidan Andy's manager, they clearly like him. Again, maybe just a victim of the fact that there's maybe better players at the club ahead of him in the pecking order for his position, but he never usually lets uh, Celtic down whenever he plays. Yeah, I think Stephen Welsh, he, he did well yesterday and you could clearly see that the the sort of backroom staff and the players were both uh, pleased with how he got on. As you're, there's, there's a, a few guys touched on it. I think Joe Hart as well also mentioned it in his Sky Sports interview, briefly saying that he came in and did well when he's, I think, the last time he started a game. I know he came on to a sub yesterday, but that was October last year. Since then, it's just been sporadic substitute appearances. I think really after the Tour of Australia when he had that injury, I don't think he really played again last season. And then he's obviously featured during the pre-season at times. But yeah, he's... I think he's relatively solid, Tony, and he did do well yesterday. Domestically, I think he's fine for the majority of games. He did see last season that he struggled against St Mern, etc. But, but I think for Europe and that, we sort of, the club need to be sort of maybe progressing by that. But I understand still having Stephen Welsh around because of the homegrown player rule and maybe he's like a, a fourth choice even, but I don't think I'd be wanting him as... As anywhere near us, a starting centre back to go into the Champions League, and I know that might be a wee bit harsh, but I would just personally feel that'd be a bit of a step back after them kind of being nowhere near it at times last season, whether it was due to injury or the set the second half of the campaign, I should say, whether it was due to injury or another reason tactically, I don't know, but I just I, I think he's fine maybe as a fourth choice, and I understand why you would still keep him at the club for a number of reasons, but because he can do a job domestically, but I think in Europe and maybe even against Rangers etc. I wouldn't be really expecting Welsh to be a, a first choice centre back, in my opinion. Well, he said he wanted four competing sec- centre halves, didn't he? Uh, so, reading between the lines, I think Welsh could be that fourth man. You know, Cameron Carter Vickers, Nurovsky, and Lager Bielka, if that signing goes through. And I think Welsh is certainly in the running to ha- be in that full spot. But I think games like Saturday are tailor made for Welsh. Sorry, Sunday, the League Cup game against Kilmarnock, uh, I think if the manager said, and we spoke about it yesterday, they touched upon the fact that I wouldn't take any unnecessary risk with Cameron Carter-Vickers, and uh, I would give Welsh the nod for a game like against Kilmarnock down at Rugby Park Cup tie, because I think he's still capable of doing a job, and he does impress when he comes in. As you say, just sometimes when he's been given a kind of lengthy run in the team, he's not convinced everybody, but he has some decent attributes, and uh, lots of comments coming in about him, but I agree with you. I think if you were going to a Champions League game with Welsh there, you would you would feel unnerved and unsettled, possibly, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think you would, Tony. It would maybe feel, and once again, I don't want to sound too harsh, that it would be a bit of a step back, you know, away from Welsh being not even fourth choice last season. Well, mm-hmm. once again, whether it was due to injuries or tactically, I'm unsure, but for him to be that far out of it and then come in and suddenly be a mainstay in the team would feel... 
potential you could go as far to say if that was the case, you'd feel like they hadn't recruited properly in that position over the summer as well. And I appreciate maybe st- stuff out left and you don't know how long that was in the works. It's maybe came out of nowhere, but I think if you're getting Lager Bielke in, I would expect, or Lager Bielke, I should say, sorry. Uh, if you're getting him in, then I would kind of expect, you know, Cameron Carter Vickers and then him and then Nevrosky fighting for the other place. And then maybe Welsh is the sort of third, the fourth option to come on. And I think that's okay. And the homegrown rule will play a factor, of course, particularly if yeah. some other players do leave in this window. Welsh might be required to be making up those numbers, but I don't think I'd be, I'd feel that sort of happy about him being a, a first choice centre back, Tony, particularly for games against Rangers and the Champions League. And I don't want to sound too harsh there, but I, I just think it would feel a wee bit of a downgrade in a position that's going to be so important if Celtic are going to do anything in Europe. I still think if the manager's keeping faith in him and thinks he can do a job, can't guarantee him lots of first team football, but still wants him around, then uh, I'm on board with that because I think he's a decent player. And there are lots of comments coming in about him. TJ, the legend. Morning, TJ, how you doing? Start Welsh at the weekend. My sentiments exactly. Michael Ross saying Welsh did play well. He did play well. Mikey Monaghan coming in and saying agreed well, slotted in, no bother. Andrew Gillia, morning, Andrew. Welsh was very good. Uh, Brian McCoy, Welsh was solid, definitely a player in the big man, he rates him. So I think a lot of Celtic supporters still believe he, he can do a job for the club. Michael Ross come back in, so happy Welsh played. It's used to have homegrown players in the squad. That's what you were alluding to, in the homegrown quarter for the Champions League. Sam Hardy, morning Sam, how are you? Welsh is desperate to take Celtic, hope it works out for him. And Plunge McNugget with a wee bit of realism saying, Welsh did well, but he isn't good enough. Depends where you stand on that. TJ the legend come back in, good fourth choice. Yep. Again, I think uh, I'm on board with quite a lot of those uh, sentiments. That uh, he he is a good guy to come in as cover, but I think that's all that Brendan Rodgers can offer him at the minute as cover. Now, I wanted also to talk about someone else who came on. We touched on him briefly. It's really about Odin Tiago home. <laughs> I'm getting a bit excited about Odin Tiago home. And the manager mentioned him yesterday too. And this is what he said, Brendan Rodgers and Odin Tiago home. Odin is a good player. He's going to really show his talent as he goes through his time at Celtic. He's a fantastic footballer. He's got an edge. He can see a pass. He can move well. And Yang came into the game and set up the third goal with a great bit of skill. But I was really pleased for all the boys that came into the game and contributed I couldn't agree more with the manager. Uh, Celtic were under pressure. I mean, it was a game that they could easily have gone to each, Aiden. But, uh, sort of as I say, they withstood that challenge and then came on strong in the last 10, 15 minutes again. And part of that was because of Odin Thiago home and uh, Yang. But Gordon Coney, I'll agree with that, Odin equals ball. I was really impressed with Odin that I think he ruined one, didn't ruin one pass, he tried I kind of give and go or I slipped through and it was cut out. But that apart, that apart, he looked apart, Aidan, and I'm excited to see what this guy can get him. And I also think next week would be a nice one to you know, let him off the leash, guys like Odin Tiago Holm and Yang, whilst, as I said yesterday, not being disrespectful to Kumarna, but put out a team of guys that are hungry and determined you know, to make an impact in the team and show the manager what they can bring moving forward. So, I'm all for that, because I think the League Cup game has came along at a decent time. Get guys like Hitati and Cameron Carter-Vickers extra time to recover, rehabilitate from their kind of injuries and tweaks. And uh, as I say, give guys who are bursting to show the manager what they could do. And I think Thiago Home and Yang certainly fall into that category. Yeah, I, I would agree, Tony. I think the next step for Home will be whether or not he's starting a game anytime soon. Maybe that could be down at Kilmarnock. Like mm-hmm. you say, but no, he's looked positive and his appearances so far. And yesterday was maybe a bit of another step up in quality he was playing against, but he looked very accomplished. And I think he can be somebody that's keen to play that sort of defence splitting pass when it's on, maybe a bit like Hitati at times. It's not always going to come off, but you know, 50% of the passes that do are maybe going to create a lot of goal scoring opportunities. So, yeah, I've been really impressed with him. He's quite fast as well, Tony. I don't think I was <laughs> quite aware of that until, uh, until, the, athletic, until the athletic game. Like, he's, he's, you know, he can get up and down the pitch quite 
quickly and freely. When we had him sort of a uh, profile for a scouting report, it was a way back, it was a way ago, it was not long after Brendan Rodgers was announced. It wasn't that he was looked at as a slow player, but I don't think his pace was seen as like a main attribute, but I think it very much could be. And given he's so young, that is something that you'd imagine he won't be losing any time soon in terms of how fast he is. But no, that was that was a real positive. It looks exciting, and I think the next day for him will be starting again. Maybe that will come at Kumarnock. I think just the fact that there is a few injuries in the team that it might not be as much of a, a sort of tweak to the start of at the weekend as might have been previously. Obviously, we'll come on and discuss that in the other time who will start, but I think there'll still be a, quite a few recognisable names in there. I think the fact that O's out injured, for example, that might have been a good game for him to start, but you'd imagine it will definitely be Kyogo. But I think Yang and Home are two guys that could definitely come in and feature against Kilmarnock, and that'll add another bit of extra excitement to that game. Now, Francis P.C. Green comes in and says, composed, vision, and aware, physically up for it. Good signs, talking about Odin Tiago Home. Michael Ross says, Odin not giving the ball away will be huge in Europe. Hope I hope a certain player is watching. Yeah. And uh, sending short coming and saying, Home looks like an intelligent player with plenty of skill. Peter King, Home looks good. And Robert Highland like the look of Odin, but will he, will, will he get the game time to develop at Celtic? Again, that's a $64,000 question. Yeah. He's not been here that long, so hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I was impressed with his with what he did with the ball yesterday and how he looked on the ball. Uh, TG the legend saying home is a great player and my replacement. This guy will start games constantly around the turn of the year. Big praise, Tony. Well, big praise. That, that is big praise, yeah. Uh, but again, if there's anybody that can help develop them, then the, the, we at Celtic have the right manager in situ and that's the kind of environment he likes to create to develop and make players better and there's no better manager to play under. But yeah, early signs are looking good. As I said, yes, they won't put too much pressure on him, but I would like to see him get a start next week if that's in the manager's head and see what he brings to the table. But he's certainly done his chances of that. No harm. Yang as well set up the last goal, clinching goal for Matt O'Reilly. Did that really, really well. So I think the two of them have certainly put themselves into contention and given the manager a kind of, I wouldn't say a selection dilemma, but he's got a question to answer, hasn't he? Come the weekend, team maiden. Yeah, I think he has Tony. And I just, that's just a wee separate aside, but I would be interested to see a midfield at some point that did contain both home and Hitati. What exact roles did fulfil across that sort of whether it be part of the double pivot or one of them playing that number ten position? I don't know. I appreciate it's probably going to be difficult for that to happen because O'Reilly's been phenomenal recently. You can't drop him and McGregor's the captain. He's always going to be involved. So it maybe be the sort of thing that rather than that midfield starting a game during a match, if there was a few wee tweets going on, we could see it, but I, I would be interested to see that, Tony, because I think they've both got some more aspects to their game that could complement each other quite well, but yeah, I, what I just wanted to touch on, because I've noticed a few comments here, was Turnbull, Tony, I know we, we mentioned it briefly yesterday, but obviously we're trying to cover the whole game, so you can't you can't quite touch on everything in detail. How do you think he got on yesterday? He was obviously kind of substituted at half-time for Hitati, do you think Turnbull did, did all right or was he a bit off the pace? Because I think the kind of general consensus in the comments seems to be that uh, he didn't have the best of games yesterday. No, I don't think he did. It wasn't uh, his best game, which is clearly why the manager brought on Hitati. Uh, as you say to maybe try and uh, push Celtic further forward and play in those kind of slip you know, through balls to likes of Kyogo and uh, Abada and Maida. So, yeah, I think it tells its own story when you get hooked at half time. Just didn't particularly work for Turnbull yesterday. You know, it was a poor half. And uh, yeah, the manager identified that, brought on Hitati. Unfortunately, Hitati got injured. But I'm not going to jump on any bandwagon and say oh, Turnbull's reverting to type. You know, he had, he had a decent game last week against Ross County, scored two goals. This was a different type of game against a different type of team who gave you a different type of challenge. And uh, the manager just felt that. The system needed tweaking by bringing Hitati on at half time. Again, I, I'll, I'll bow to the manager on that call, but it's a call you would probably have made anyway yourself. Whether or not you've done it at half time or maybe done it after the hour mark, it's fair enough. But I think it's a fair call, and I don't think Turnbull can have too many complaints that he came off for Hitati because the manager just wanted to do something different. And the 2 1 lead that they had 
at half time was pretty precarious, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, Tony, and, and I thought you could see a bit of a difference when Hitati came on. I know it was only for a, a mm. short period, unfortunately, before he got injured, but I felt there was a bit of an improvement in Celtic's play. When he came on, it seemed to be a wee bit sharper, a wee bit crisper, and he played an up, a couple of nice passes. He maybe lost a wee bit of that when he went off, and then that sort of last 10, 15 minutes, Celtic were in control. Obviously, when the, then when the goal came, that was pretty much it. It was cruise control for that last sort of whatever it was, 10 minutes or so. But yeah, at a Turnbull, look, well, nobody's, nobody's writing them off or anything, but I think it's probably going to be getting, as a team, should be getting picked on form and how guys are doing. And I think it can be hard or it can be easy sometimes if a player does really, really well to maybe assume that's them cementing their position. Or on the flip side, if they do terribly one game, like, you know, they shouldn't be anywhere near it for a period of time. And I, I'm guilty of that more than probably anyone. But so it's hard not to get too high or too low at this stage of the season. Uh, when there's also still a lot of football to be played and a lot of guys are still finding their feet. But, yeah, I, I would probably be a wee bit surprised if Turnbull did start next week, just because of the options that are there in the middle of the park, Tony, from McGregor, O'Reilly, Hitati, now home, etc. Even Awata, I know he, he had been featuring at right back, but we know he can play in, particularly that deeper midfield position. So there's so many options there in terms of how it would shape up that maybe it wouldn't be a bad option to have Turnbull coming off the bench, because I've always thought that's kind of what he's best at, making that impact with 25, 30 minutes to go in games, and I completely understand he'll be wanting to play as much football as possible, particularly after last season, and you can see that's also something that's been getting discussed with Matt O'Reilly's comments after the Ross County game, so I understand that's maybe not Turnbull's ideal role, and if Rodgers was to make that, to make clear to him that was going to be the case, then he might not be happy about that, but I, I just have always been of the opinion that that kind of role Turnbull was playing last season, coming off the bench, and again was, and what I thought was maybe he's kind of best, uh, what he could what he could offer best to the team. But you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye on it and see how it goes. I think there is just so many midfield options there that it's not that bad now that it's getting tweaked a wee bit at the start of the season when he's still trying to work out his best team. And what well, there could be more options added between now and the end of the transfer window as well, so it may be even more difficult for Turnbull to be a regular in the side, but. Yeah, he's definitely not a problem by any stretch. I mean, he did struggle yesterday, but he's still got plenty to give between now and the end of the season, hopefully. Yeah, Sam Hartley comes in and says the midfield clicked into action when Rio came on. I wanted to flick up this comment by Ian McIntosh, which I agree with as well. He said, Brendan showed his quality yesterday with making the right changes at the right time and game management's top level. No, took Carter Vickers off, didn't want to risk him at all with the hamstring tweak, and he also took Rio Hatati off when he felt his calf going, you know, I know he was a substitute and maybe other managers are, could have said, just play on, see how it goes. But he took him off because he didn't want to do him any further damage. So I was quite impressed by that as well. You know, sometimes players are their own worst enemy. They'll, they'll run it off or they'll say, you know, you only have to look at O, who played on through an injury, didn't he? And admitted that in a sense, made it worse. And Celtic are without him for, what, four to six weeks, I think, isn't it? So... I was quite impressed by that with the manager yesterday that he did that and I know it was hard because Celtic did. There was a wee bit of dynamism when Rio Tati came on and he started getting further up the pitch and you know he was starting to show his qualities again. So I took my hat to the manager for that and I think Ian's right that he did make those calls at the right time. But again that comes with somebody who's been there, seen it and done it. Yeah, no, the changes were really effective the Tony. Like I say, even though Hattati did go off injured. I thought he personally did quite well when he came on. Yang obviously coming on was was a, almost a stroke of genius getting that assist. Home came on and was driving the team. So now the substitutes were all really good yesterday because I know that's been a concern and a valid one from my point of view that sometimes you've looked at the bench and after you make one or two changes, there's not seen as being a lot of depth there. I appreciate there's injuries right now, but yeah, I think it, it was good to see the substitutes making make an impact yesterday, Tony, because that, that's what you want to see. And Brendan Rodgers was known for that in his last spell, been able to really been really good at tweaking games if it wasn't going Celtic's way. The main example that everybody always refers to, but I think that's the best one, was that game at Ibrox, Celtic were down to 10 men. A draw probably would have been an OK result. It would have been easy to just maybe sit in and leave it at that, but made, he made the change. He brought on Edward, put him up front with Dembele and we know what happened. It <laughs> led to the allocation getting cut. So, uh, yeah, 
if that's exactly what you can see that Brendan Rodgers can do tactically and it was maybe on a lesser scale yesterday because Celtic were obviously winning the game but it was still good to see that he was able to tweak it and they got the rewards for that I think as well, even the, I mean Celtic 1-3-1 it was hard fought you know, like they mentioned again that I predicted it right, it would be hard fought got the prediction for starting the living right as well Eden. you're all dark, top man but, uh, never lose also, it, Tony. Never uh, lose you it. never lose what you don't have. Let's put it that way. Uh, but also, Celtic missed a couple of chances as well. Maida, in particular, I think, missed a, a couple of ones that you would. There was a, an exceptional clearance off the line, I think, was, was it from Mikey Devlin? Uh, if memory serves. And, and I mean, I, I thought Maida, all he had, I think Maida thought all he had to do was just connect with it and, and it was going in the net. But it was a wonderful goal line clearance. And then he had the one on one. Which he also missed as well. So, if Celtic won four or five one, you know, I, I think lots of people would have been like, "Fair enough." Uh, it maybe flattered them, but they still created those chances, Aiden, and it could have been four or five one, and nobody really would have batted an eyelid. And it's a team who I said yesterday they've had two years of playing a certain way. It's now the, the form book, and that's now been ripped up, and it's been tweaked, and they're playing a different way. And they're getting used to it, and the players are getting used to it. And some players are thriving, some players are, um, no, are maybe taking a wee while to adjust to Brendan Rodgers' messaging. And that's fair enough. I would accept a lot more criticism if the team were losing or they were dropping points. But it's, it's you know, it's noticeable that Celtic aren't firing on all cylinders, but that's two games, two league games, seven goals, Aiden six points, this team will get better, they will get better once everybody is comfortable in their skin the way they were under the previous manager Absolutely Tony, Look, we know if there's anybody that can develop players, it's Brendan Rodgers he's done it so much, I don't want to go in and list all the guys he developed in his first spell and who improved at Leicester etc in Liverpool because we've kind of went over that a lot since he's been since he's uh, been confirmed as coming back as manager but yeah, the team will definitely get better. If you guys like Alistair Johnson coming back from injury, hopefully Carter Rickers will be okay, Hitate, even somebody like Tilly will see them come in, see what they can do, and then hopefully they will add, you know, three, four other players as well to the squad to give it that sort of extra depth. But I think you were right to touch on, they've been so set in their ways, effectively, for the last two seasons of playing as we sort of coined the Ange ball. And it, it's going to be different to adjust to that. Also, there's some similarities in terms of playing out from the back, but there is tweaks. Rogers has mentioned that. Joe Hart touched on it as well. I think in his Sky Sports interview yesterday saying that it's going to take time. And yeah, it will. At least, you know, you've not got the Champions League qualifiers at the start of the season. You've got a few games before you're playing Rangers, so there's a chance to build it up. But I think ideally, when you go to Ibrox in the third of September, you're, you're firing on all cylinders by then, or you're just about to hit a good run of form, you know, maybe the week before you for the really good result or whatever. But yeah, I think it, it's there's still progress to be made, Tony, but hopefully they're, they're on the right track. But the other things for me are encouraging, Eden. I, I get that you know people saying if they play like that in the Champions League, then you know they're, they're, they're going on, you know, they'll, they'll be turned over, but they'll not play like that in the Champions League. They're, you know, Rogers' philosophy and style will have been embedded in, you know, a lot for our. A lengthier period of time and the players will be getting used to it so and you probably think that the personnel might change as well before the Champions League with guys coming in uh, more additions to the squad quality additions so I, I just think that there's and I, I can't speak I'm speaking for myself I'm not speaking for Celtic sports but I, I look up on social media and sometimes there's, there's you know hysterical overreaction to the team but I mean, they won three one at a difficult ground, a place where a team came out and had a right good go at them. And I think games like this will serve Celtic well in the long run because that's what you want. But they still found a way to win, and maybe not firing on all cylinders, but they still got that stamp and hallmark of quality that gets them through. Kyogo's goal is just a touch of class, absolute touch of class. But I, I'm I'm looking at the bigger picture here. I'm I'm more the glass half full optimist as opposed to glass half empty and yeah there's things that need addressed you know uh, Greg Taylor's not looked the part since Brendan Rodgers came in another one who's maybe 
struggling to get used to Brendan Rodgers' style, having been given a template for the last two years and you knew exactly what he was going to do. So just different things like that. It takes time. and uh, But I would be more concerned if points were dropped, Aiden. Yeah, goals have been conceded, but they're still doing what they do best and that's score goals and win football matches. And I, I still think that's a recipe for success when it all clicks, and it will click. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm convinced as well, Tony, that it will click into place at some point. And if you're not playing the best and you're still winning in the early stage of the season, when there's some players that are out injured or some guys that are getting knocks in games, and you're, you're hoping that you're still going to add uh, at least three or four players to the squad, then, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with how it's going at the moment. It can always be better, and I think, once again, the last season, this, at the start, Ange probably team was hitting their sort of peak near the end of his first campaign. That like, continued right at the start, so you were sort of just steamrolling teams, kind of culminating with beating Rangers 4-0. And then after that, it was uh, kind of full steam ahead, really, domestically, up until the sort of split. So I can understand after that fast start why this maybe does seem a wee bit more not, 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 I don't mean poorer or anything, but maybe just not quite as sort of quick and dynamic. But I, I think I think we will get there, to be honest. And uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that they'll be able to add a bit more to the squad, Tony, because I think that will probably settle a, a lot of supporters down, will be if they can actually, you know, mm-hmm. develop the sort of overall first team squad a wee bit more before. Obviously, you need to confirm your team for the Champions League, which will be relatively soon, I'd imagine. Uh, you know, in, in the next sort of three, four weeks, that will need to be confirmed. Just sort of, I think it's 20, 26 man squad, I think it is. So, yeah, that, yeah. That'll, be, that'll be interesting to see who's sort of lined up in that. And fingers crossed that combined with uh, Alistair Johnson's coming back from injury and Tilly as well being available, that will give Celtic more options. Yeah, I mean, the manager said himself yesterday, he was asked what areas did Celtic need to improve on. And he just, he said this, there's so many, I would be here all day if I spoke to you about them. From throw-ins, for and against, build-up play, attacking. It's just time. It's working with players, how we want to work, the different phases of the game. That's just time. Again, I'm fully on board with that. I know exactly what the manager's trying to say there. Just give it time for everything to sort of come to fruition. So, yeah. And another thing he touched upon just before we go was Alexandro Bernabe. Eh, Bernabe, sorry. Uh, he came back into the squad yesterday and he was asked everything was everything all right with uh, Bernabe and this is what he said. Yes, his alarm clock is working now. He has been brilliant in pre-season in terms of mentality and attitude and I felt for him. The very morning of the first game of the season, whatever happened, the alarm did not go off. I don't have time to wait. If you start late in the game and you're not quite ready, then the game could be dead. It's gone. No, then the game could be dead. So he said, it's gone. We draw a line under it. He's a good guy. You've got to learn and you've got to be ready. His professionalism was fantastic and there is no worry. When you come into a club, the standard of your performance on and off the pitch is vital. We all make mistakes, but you learn from them and you'll be better for it. So it looks as if he's drawn a line under that, uh, Aidan, already. And possibly uh, Bernabe could play next week at Rugby Park. Potentially, Tony, it's as much as I think Taylor has been struggling, I still think at the moment he's he's a queer first choice personally. Nothing to do with what happened with Bernabe off the pitch, just in the sort of brief sort of fits mm-hmm. and starts of season. I know he scored the two goals in pre season, but I think uh, yourself and Ryan and I, we all kind of agreed that he was still lacking a bit defensively. And I know Taylor struggled as well. There's maybe a separate discussion about whether one of the positions Celtic should be prioritising is a left back. I would still have a goal as the main role, but maybe if you're if you were able to get three, four players in, a left back would be an area you would to get someone in. We'd have to wait and see about that. But yeah, it could be that he plays down there, Tony. The only thing I would say is there is probably going to be a couple of changes because you'd imagine even if Carter Vickers and Hitati are all right, they're not going to be risked on that surface that surface. So they would be dropping out, and that might mean that he wants to keep somebody like Taylor in just for a wee bit more sort of solidity in that position. Somebody that's always been playing there a lot over the last two years, but yeah, it could be an option for him at the weekend. I mean, out of the games coming up, that seems the one he's most likely to play, doesn't it? Yeah. Just given the sort of context of it being a cup game, which are obviously important, but a way to Kumarnock, etc. on that surface. But yeah, it, 
It could be Tony, but at least you know that he's not going to have that held against him by Brendan Rodgers. If we're taking those those comments at face value, he's he's not going to sort of hold that hold that against him that he missed that team meeting. But yeah, it's I guess he's just got to get his head now head down now and just try and work hard to get a position in the team. And love it comes in and says being top of the league and playing poor that's great in his opinion or her opinion. Uh, yes, indeed, I think. Uh, yeah, you you look at Celtic and, as I say, maybe you wanted more from them, wanting to bust out the traps, Aiden, but six points from, from certainly one difficult away game already ticked off in the calendar. You can't really ask for much more than that, can you, at this stage when everybody is settling? And I say if there was a possibility or a potential for dropping points, I thought it would have been yesterday when, as I say, the Celtic players are still getting used to Brendan Rodgers and an Aberdeen team who did have a go because they maybe sense some blood and some vulnerability about them. So, yeah, I'm still pleased with the way it's going because I know in my heart of hearts that it will get better under the manager and the players will uh, thrive on that. Yeah, I think it will improve, Tony. And there's been wee positive sparks here and there. For example, uh, that move for the third goal was very, very good. Kyogo's finish was, was phenomenal. Even even Abada's sort of anticipation for his goal uh, was great to see him getting in those sort of dead areas in the ball. Do you know he's good at? So, yeah, uh, there, there, there's positives there, Tony, no doubt. And I hope nobody thinks we're trying to come across too negative or anything. We're just yesterday when you're obviously picking it apart at the moment, it's a match reaction. It's still relatively fresh. I know we didn't go on live immediately after the game, but, you know, it was that fresh. You were still in the Pudodri car park. Do you know what I mean? It was... It wasn't a, uh, there was it wasn't that long to maybe sort of chew over it, but looking back, I think it was a phenomenal result, and it probably was more of a positive performance than I was first seeing yesterday. Excellent. Well, we shall discuss more stuff tomorrow, Aidan. But it's another happy Monday. Aberdeen one, Celtic three, Celtic six out of six so far, and the promise that they will get better under Brendan Rodgers moving forward. Lots of things to be positive about. To be perfectly honest, well, there is in my book, Aiden, as I say, I, I'm kind of a eternal dreamer, optimist, positive kind of guy, glass half full, that kind of thing. But we shall do it all again tomorrow, but I direct you to a strap line along the bottom of the screen. And if you enjoyed the morning briefings, then why don't you subscribe to the Celtic Way website and help us uh, support well, you'll help us supporting top quality football journalism in the process, covering the club you love, myself, Aidan and Ryan McGinley uh, try and provide that. And all, all for the click of a button, guys, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Aidan, what's the offer at the minute? Four pound for four months at the moment, guys. As part of that, you'll get sort of the match reaction we had yesterday live on the website. Ryan's uh, stats bomb data have ground up of uh, the victory at Pathology, which will be going live at some point on the website today. And we really appreciate anybody that's able to subscribe, guys. It allows uh, us to do videos like this, match reactions at the weekend. So, yeah, get yourself involved if you haven't already. Excellent. So, Aidan, thank you for your contribution today. Thanks, guys, for your comments. We we'll try and read them out as we're going along and discussing the various topics, part of the community we've built up here. And we thank you very much for that. We shall return tomorrow, Aidan, but have a happy Monday. Always is when Celtic win, isn't it, Aidan? It is indeed, Tony. Happy Monday. Take care. All the best. See you tomorrow.